Moving on to nine, number 10A, new business. Let's grow 90 Pershing Drive site plan application to operate a hybrid cannabis facility discussion of possible action. Is there somebody here from the applicant to address the commission at this time? David. Yes, David Salinas here. Okay, David, what do you plan on doing? Where's the site? What are you doing? Et cetera, et cetera. Explain it to us. So the plan is uh, nine, is at 90 Pershing Drive, which is currently the Italian Pavilion. Our goal is to uh, is to utilize the dining room of the the Italian Pavilion. Put up a wall that has absolutely no uh, 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 entry or um, uh, 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 excuse me, a security wall up between the dining room and the kitchen and takeout area. Uh, with no penetrations, that was the word I was looking for, um, and and basically create two units out of that sink that six thousand square foot building. Uh, in the back of the building will be the Italian Pavilion's kitchen, uh, takeout, and small smaller dining area, uh, and the dining room in the front uh, will be turned into a cannabis retail facility. Um, uh, we have modest updates to the building. We plan on using the building as is, replacing the roof, uh, rehabbing the building as necessary um, to update it for uh, for our current use. Um, we have full security. Uh, we'll have full security plans up to the Department of Consumer Protection's protocols, which is uh, all state led initiatives. Uh, which include the camera system, the vaulting system to protect uh, the products from any um, uh, any issues that might occur on the if there's a break in, um, and uh, and that's it. Ryan, you want to go through your letter? Uh, sure, Mr. Chairman. So a um, few things. I just uh, uh, some some items on my 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 comment letter were you know checklist related, like the app. Uh, Abutting property owners need to be notified of the application, um, and also I, I noted that the site plan submitted really is just a sort of a markup of a plan that was prepared back in 2010 for I think it was the brick 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 house restaurant, um, and it just has some PDF sort of notes on it. Uh, so I think it's important for this applicant or for this application to, I, I would say, more clearly define new points of egress from the building where uh, handicap accessibility is being provided for both this building, which I suspect will be the existing handicap spaces, but also for the takeout um, portion of uh, Italian Pavilion, which will remain. Um, similarly to an updated site plan would, would be a, a sort of a updated or, or sort of accurately drawn architectural plan showing how this is gonna be divided. Um, again, that was uh, more or less a, a sketch that was submitted as part of this application. Uh, I also asked the applicant to prepare uh, some maps showing distances to uh, churches, schools, uh, and other uh, critical um, uses that that a cannabis establishment has to be 1,500 feet from, which they've submitted. Um, so, so essentially, just looking for a little bit more detail on the uh, on on the site plan and on the architecture. And along with that, you know, the parking demand for both uses. So, so we, um, from that letter, we sent out the letters to the abutters uh, immediately that day. Um, we could not get an updated survey in time. That would take five to six weeks. But we took the existing survey, survey which is exactly how the building and parking lot is today. Um, and we had that professionally designed by our architect and we resubmitted it. Uh, showing an updated parking map with the parking table, uh, as well as a space plan, a professionally designed space plan, uh, showing where the uh, egress uh, would would be uh, in the building. We're really only adding one uh, new egress in the in the this, in the retail portion of the building. Um, we did a map showing the distances to the churches, schools, and playgrounds. Um, there was no definition of playground, but, uh, the closest one would be the, the, the trail, uh, near the train, the train line. So the entry to the train line, we, we mapped that for distances. David, aside from the roof, are you doing any, um, architectural improvements to the outside of the building, fascia, anything like that? 
Uh, as of right now, we don't think so. It'll be uh, it'll be modest at best. Uh, some roofing, maybe paint the brick. Uh, we haven't decided yet, um, but we don't see any any ma major architectural improvements in this phase. Um, once we're up and running, and we know that this is a viable location, uh, and we feel good about it, uh, which we, we we are confident it will be, um, we'll we'll invest more dollars into it. Cool. Thank you. David, just for clarification, uh, it's permitted use in that zone, in that location. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, okay. Just a little bit about me for the community. Um, I have uh, just, uh, I'm, I live in Milford, Connecticut, about 10, 15 minutes from you guys. I drove to the city hall today. It was an easy route right to New Haven Avenue, and you make the left, and you're right there. Um, I live off Orange Ave. Uh, I'm a, a businessman, a father of three. Uh, I'm a businessman. I have a, a pretty big real estate development in New Haven Coal District, which is an early stage technology campus uh, where we have about 500 businesses that call our facility home. Um, it's uh, uh, We took an abandoned bus depot and developed it into a beautiful uh, uh, new use and, and, and office building um, that's, that's done really well in New Haven. Uh, in addition, we've created a technology school for underprivileged kids and uh, that provides uh, technology training to juniors and seniors in high schools in New Haven and Stanford today. And we're expanding it into other cities as we speak. And I, my original company that I started here in Connecticut was with another resident of Milford, uh, which employs about 50 people. And it's a, a, a digital marketing agency that I started about 18 years ago. Um, that I no longer run, but I do own the company uh, and it's operational in New Haven today. <clears throat> okay, are there any other questions for the applicant from the commission members? Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, Raul. Uh, Ryan, is that the sign for uh, Italian Pavilion, is that grandfathered in by any chance as far as the height? Or yeah. will <clears throat> yes. any new signage be more you know on the billboard out by the street or are they going to be allowed to do a high sign as a like well, the sign, pavilion the sign the sign exists today mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's an existing non-conforming sign so we wouldn't we wouldn't be in a position to require a change to the height of that sign could we change could could they expand the square footage of that sign, Ryan? I don't believe so, no. No, that would be non-conforming. That would be correct. So and the rule of thumb is you can't expand a non-conforming use. Correct. Right. Period. The, 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 the existence of the sign itself is 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 um is not is not inappropriate. It's on its own property, this lot, but the height of it is certainly and the size of it certainly well, uh, yeah, the the height and the size are both non-conforming. Right. So let's let's state that you can't expand that non-conformity by increasing the square footage or the height of the sign. Okay. Is there a sign plan, Brian? I don't believe I've seen one. No, we, we didn't have enough time. We just we got the comments. Uh, we got the comments from Ryan on I think it was Monday or Tuesday of last week. Um, our plan was to use the existing signage areas uh, of the building uh, as they are today. We were not planning just change on change the space. Yeah, exactly. Just change the space. Yeah, I mean they probably maybe not as big. I think uh, you know we, if anything we would go smaller. Uh, but I don't see us. I don't see us increasing any 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 size of the signs. Everything will be tasteful. Our, our zoning enforcement officer is on this <laughs> call, so he could hear that. He'll make sure. Yeah. Um, I have one question for you, David. What What's the traffic counts that you're anticipating to your store? Uh, I, it's so it's hard to say for for certain. Um, the I could tell you that the estimates in Connecticut have been significantly lower than we had anticipated they would be. Um, that could be there's a number of reasons why that could be the case. Um, you know, our goal would be, you know, we think this is a great location. We think that this 
um, this area could uh, could serve Der the, the greater Derby area uh, and beyond. Um, so we're excited for the revenue potential that it could create uh, both for us and for the town of Derby. Um, most people don't know about the 3% share of revenue that you guys get as a tax. Um, oh, you do know. Great. Um, some people do not know. Some people at town hall were asking. We're on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I think it could be really, I think it could be a great. So, but you would have to have done some kind of marketing study where you, you're anticipating so much traffic in and out of the store, no? Uh, I mean, to a, to a certain extent we have, it's just based off of the traffic yeah. count that's on, that's on Pershing drive. And then the passerbys on, on route eight between, uh, between Bridgeport and Waterbury. So you don't uh, have a count coming into your store. I mean, we have an estimate as far as revenue is concerned. What is that we it? Yeah. Do no, I'm not revenue, but I mean, customers. Traffic count. Uh, I, I think we could do somewhere in the vicinity of 200 to 400 customers a day. Oh, well, that's a lot. No worse that's, than Chick-fil-A, Dave. <laughs> and yeah, it's, exactly. a challenging, it's a challenging parking lot there. That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. You know, and, you're, and, and, you're, and, and, you're at the end. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, you know, I met with the, with the mayor today, and I, I, I talked to him about, you know, seeing if they could maybe – uh, help us lobby DOT for an earlier exit to, 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 to open up that side of the lot for everybody. I don't know if that's ever possible, but, um, you know, we are the, we are going to be the, uh, I think a, a very visible location. And I think that could be, that could add to the, the traffic count for the store. And I think that adds to the, to the taxable income for, uh, for the town, for the city of Derby. I will say, Dave, when we first talked about adding the resolution as far as what we were going to you know put on for restrictions and stuff well not just dave to everybody when we were first talking about accepting this and, and putting a set of regulations in place we were specifically concerned with the highest and best location for something like this and yeah. i can't think of a better one in the city personally no i i, I agree I, I just don't like the approach the approach through that parking lot because that parking lot is challenging, even when you're going to Albies. I, th I I think if I remember correctly, David, I think we tried to have another entrance off of the ramp coming off yeah, of Route Eight. Yeah. yeah, and they they, they went they through. They wouldn't even. Yeah. They rejected it. That no, was that, that, that was I, the fr previous owner. Yeah, we tried I believe. That with. I believe that's a non-access line. Yes. Um, and the DOT does not easily modify those it, it, it is something that they um they're typically very strict with and if you are to open up something in a non-access line they they require significant sums of money to do it um and they require usually the closure of another opening so it's 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 not something that it it takes a while <laughs> that was enough to line the two openings that and across the street, the ShopRite shopping center, if you remember correctly, yeah, to get that to aligned be properly because they were offset. Five, five, five section intersection or five lane intersection. Or, yes. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty it awful. Was, they were offset and we tried to get a second ingress and egress and they just wouldn't even hear of it. It was a non access line, as Ryan pointed out. Although we wanted it, the state wouldn't budge. They don't want it. And unfortunately, they control the, the road. So we couldn't do it. I'd be happy to, to, to put some effort behind lobbying to see if we can get it done. If that's if, if you guys still want it, I, I would be. Uh, another happy. thought, another thought for ingress and egress to that. Is there a, a better way to get access from that area of that parking lot to Division Street? Possibly. <laughs> separate you know i know you're now you're instead of a highway you're dealing with a train but <laughs> it's another ingress and egress and if, if you're like well i really just want to go to let's grow without driving through all these starbucks popeyes and everything else you make the right on division street you make the right in the back driveway that dumps you into the back of that parking lot and you can either go back out the same way or you can not that that falls on yeah. david just a thought that requires would require access easements from other property owners. Okay. 
Is there any other questions from commission members for the applicant at this time? So, to, to me, in my opinion, he's coming, it, like Daniel mentioned before, he's going exactly where we wanted them to. And we had this discussion earlier on when we adopted the uh, regulations to where, where do we want to see a place of um, dis dispensing? And this is exactly where we want to see it. The question uh, that our zoning enforcement officer, and it's before us for a site plan review, mm -hmm. and it's because of having the two approved uses in one building. And that was our major concern. The cannabis distribution and the, you get high and you can go eat. You get the munchies. You go eat in the back. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, right? Um, and that's all I have to say. I think this is exactly where we want it. And I can't, and I agree with Dan, I can't think of a better place in Derby to have this. And the ingress and ingress, although I'd love to have the ingress and ingress, we were, <laughs> it was, it was, it was like pulling teeth to get these two entrance and exits aligned with across the street, let alone move it, move it and get another one. And it also triggered an appeal. If you, if you recall. Yes, it did. <laughs> So I, um, since this is site plan review, I move that we accept the application, receive it, approve it, um, with the addition of every uh, that they adhere to all of everything in Ryan's letter dated January 9th, two thousand twenty-four, and also signage plan, because uh, we'd like to see the signage. Is there a second? I'll second that. Made and second. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. David, welcome to Derby. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be a part of the community, guys. I appreciate the, uh, the vote of confidence, and I look forward to seeing you guys. Uh, not that you're going to come into the store, but at least at the Italian <laughs> Pavilion. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Make us proud. <laughs> Thank you, All right, David. You guys have it's going to be the first customer. Have a great night, guys. Thank you.